Hello, hello. Welcome to another conversation lesson. We're going to jump right into it today. Let me open our Ingu website. There we go. As I always mention, you guys can come here by yourself with a friend if you want. They have a lot of free material and you can work through it together. So let's see, what shall we do today? Uh, let's look here, new money. Bank of England reveals King Charles III notes. All right. Oh, let me just make this bigger for us. As I always mention, we're going to start with the vocabulary first. I'll read the words and the definition with an example sentence. I'd like you to hit pause after each one, and then you can just read it out loud. Make sure you've got the pronunciation right. If you're not sure about the meaning that they give you, just type it in Google, monarch and meaning, and they'll give you all the meanings and different ways we can use it. So let's start. First one, monarch, a ruler of a kingdom or empire, such as a king, queen, or emperor. Emperor Naruhito is Japan's 126th monarch. Reign to rule as king, king, queen, etc. King Henry reigned from 1509 until 1547. King Henry VIII, sorry. Then we've got feature to include something as a special or important part. Actor Michael Caine has featured in over 100 films throughout his career. Then we've got a portrait, a painting, drawing, photograph, etc., of a person's face. Vincent van Gogh painted more than 40 self portraits between 1885 and 1889. Worn out, damaged, or in bad condition because of use. I need to buy some new running shoes because these ones are completely worn out. That last one, currency, a system of money used in a particular country. The new Taiwan dollar has been the official currency of Taiwan since 1949. All right, let's go right to our article. Again, I'm gonna read the whole article at once. You can hit pause after each little paragraph, read it out loud. You have to go out loud. Make sure you got the pronunciation down. All right. So, Bank of England reveals King Charles III notes. The Bank of England has revealed designs for banknotes featuring King Charles III, which will be released in mid-2024. The new English monarch's portrait will replace that of Queen Elizabeth II on, two, on five pound, 10 pound, 20 pound, and 50 pound notes. The other side of each note will stay unchanged and will continue to feature former Prime Minister Winston Churchill on the £5 note, author Jane Austen on the £10 note, artist J.M.W. Turner on the £20 note, and computer scientist Alan Turing on the £50 note. The UK's longest reigning monarch, Queen Elizabeth II, died in September 2022. The new notes, which are printed on a thin plastic material will only be printed to replace old worn out notes and to meet any new currency demand. The Bank of England has said that this will reduce the env environmental and financial effects of releasing the new designs and also means that notes featuring Queen Elizabeth II will remain in use. Queen Elizabeth II's portrait also features on some currencies in Commonwealth countries, including Australia, Canada, and New Zealand. Australia has expected to introduce new coins in 2023, but has yet to make a decision on notes. Canada and New Zealand have yet to announce any changes. Queen Elizabeth II was the first monarch to appear on Bank of England notes when her portrait was introduced to the £1 note in 1960. However, monarchs, monarchs have appeared on English coins for over 1,000 years. The first monarch to be featured on coins in England was Athelstan, who became king of all the Anglo-Saxons in Britain in 925. For many people during that time, the king's portrait on the coin was the only way they could see what their monarch looked like. Coins with King Charles III's portrait were released in the UK in December 2022. And then here we have some examples of what it would look like. 
Hmm. I think they touched it up a little bit. He looks older in real life. <laughs> okay. Well, let's move on to our discussion questions. Again, I'm going to read the question. You can hit pause before or after I answer it. If you want to listen to my answer first, you can respond to that or you can just answer afterwards. If you want to answer before without my influence in any way, then you can listen to what I say and see if we have similar ideas or if we disagree on certain things. So number one, what are your thoughts on the UK's banknotes featuring King Charles III? Yeah, I suppose it's expected. He's the new king and they should probably put his face on the money now. They changed the national national anthem from God save the queen to God save the king. So probably going to change the money too. Although I don't know in the UK how much cash do people still use because nowadays, I mean, even here in Thailand now, most of the time you just use your phone to pay, you know, you scan a QR code and... Uh, I don't really use cash, cash that much anymore, so it might become redundant by the time King Charles passes away. Okay, well, number two, do you know much about the British royal family? I mean, as much as anybody else, I don't know all the ins and outs. I know, is it Prince Harry? Well, it's not a prince anymore, but Harry and Meghan Markle released a documentary recently. I haven't watched it. I don't really care about all their drama. I've got my own life to live. So, uh, yeah, I know as much as what's out in the public, but not any details. Nah, can't be bothered. Number three, does your country have a royal family? If so, do they often make headlines? Um, South Africa, we don't have a royal family. Um, but yeah, in Thailand, they do have a royal family and they do make headlines quite often in Thailand. Um, sometimes positive headlines, sometimes not that positive, but they also, I think there is a thing, they have a rule where you cannot talk or publish a lot of negative things within the country, negative things about the king. But there are, you know, some murmurings of people not being happy with the new king's behavior and whatnot. But I don't know. I don't know too much about it. I stay out of the politics. <laughs> it's not my country to discuss. Number four, what do you imagine would be the most difficult thing about being royal? Oof. I would expect the privacy. Um, that must probably be very difficult. I, you know, when I was young, I always like, oh, I want to be famous. Yeah, I want to be famous when I grow up. But now that I'm older and you see kind of what famous people have to go through, it's like, eh, I just want to be rich. I, <laughs> I don't want to be famous because if you are famous, you can't go anywhere. If you, you know, if you just want to go to a restaurant and have a meal with family, people are going to come like, oh, can I just take a picture? And you always have to be polite or you have to try and be nice. And it might be nice the first time, you know, when the first time people come and it's like, oh, can I take a picture with you? Um, it's like, yeah, sure. You want to take a pic? But then after, you know, five times, 10 times, 100 times, after 10 years, and you still, because every time these people see you, it's probably the first time they see you. And it's like, the excited is like this famous person that I always see on TV. But for you, it's like the 10,000th time that somebody's like, again, just trying to eat some food, you know? So I think it can get annoying after a while. Um, yeah. Uh, after some time, I'm sure it gets very, very annoying. But then again, if you look at the kind of money these people get from being famous, maybe you have to suck it up a little bit, you know. <laughs> I don't want to go to work every day, but you have to to pay the bills. And if you want to get that famous money, you have to do these famous things. So I guess it's part of the job. Yeah. All right. Number five, who would you say are the most well-liked public figures in your country? In South Africa, um, I don't know. I don't know who's a 
public figure who's well liked. There's probably some kind of a musician. I know Afrikaans musicians, some of them are kind of like annoying, but there's some of them that people really like. And they, I think there's some actors as well that are well liked, but I can't put my finger now on one specific person. That's like, this person's so amazing. Um, in Thailand, I have no idea. I don't, I don't know. I have no idea in Thailand. Yeah, sorry. Further discussion. Number one, what do banknotes in your country look like? So in South Africa, oh, I haven't lived in South Africa now for 12 years. What do they have? I think they have an animal. They have the big five on the money. So there's a, and we also have, we've got a 10 rand, 10, 20, 50, 100, and a 200 note. Yeah, so it's the big five. So there's probably on one, there's a, you'll have to Google it. I'm not sure, but there's the big five. So, so I think the 50's got a lion, the 100's got a buffalo. Yeah, 10 elephant, 20. Oh, man. No, the 10 is the rhino, 20 is the elephant, 50 lion, 100 buffalo, 200 the leopard. I think, if I had to guess, I don't remember. And then in the Thai money, I think they also have the king on the money. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what's on the other sides. Number two, whose picture would you like to see on your country's banknotes? Oh, definitely not the president's. Um, I don't know. I don't know. My country, I think it's good with the animals, you know. I just have the animals. There's no one person or group of people that should be singled out. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Number three, do you know anyone who collects old money and coins? Hey, I used to do that when I was very young. I loved collecting money. I had a very I had some very rare banknotes. My oldest coin was from eighteen seventy something, um, but I don't even know where that mon that coin collection is now. I think my mom has it somewhere. I don't I don't know. Uh, other than what I had when I was younger, I don't know anybody who collects coins or money. Number four. Have you ever had trouble using foreign money when traveling? Uh, not really, no. I usually make sure that I have the right currency and have money. And usually they have foreign exchange at, at the airport. So if for some reason you can just change money there. You don't get very good exchange rates. I think it's best to change money before you travel. Um, yeah. But nowadays, I just use my ATM card and withdraw money at the ATM if I'm traveling somewhere. Yeah. All right, number five, do you usually pay for things using cash or card? Yeah, like I said, when I lived in Shanghai in China, that's where I started using, um, they've got WeChat Pay and Alipay, which is so common now uh, when i started it when i moved there they i think they had it already but i was not too comfortable with it and then towards the end it was just kind of everywhere everybody was using so i changed over and then when i came to move to thailand they didn't really have online uh, paying with your phone or oh, the cash or card oh no i'm talking about paying with your phone sorry and um they just used cashier. They don't like using cards in Thailand either. A lot of times you want to pay with a swipe a card, they'll charge extra money. But so I had I had to go back to using cash when I moved over to Thailand. But now they have a lot of phone payment methods. So again, now I pay mostly with using my phone. Just scan a QR code and away you go. So yeah, I don't use my card at all just to withdraw some money from overseas and then deposit it here and then just use my phone 
I don't really use cache anymore. All right. Well, that's it, guys. So let me just stop this. And uh, yeah, that's it for today. Keep practicing. Try doing something every day. You know, try and do something in English every day. Try and do everyday activities in English. Um, the more you use the language, the more comfortable you'll get with it, the more you learn. And if you use it for everyday kind of things, you know, it's, if you come across a word, you look on your phone quickly, a translator or dictionary is like, oh, okay, that's what the word means. And then you move on, you continue doing what you're doing, but doing it in English. Um, if you want to speak like a native speaker, you have to use the language like a native speaker, you know, so try and do as much as possible in English. And when it comes to speaking, you have to try and say the words out loud. You know, you have to get your tongue used to making the sounds. So read, even if you don't have somebody to speak with, read things out loud, like these articles, read them out loud. You get used to making the sounds in English um, and your tongue gets used to it. You know, some sounds, words, when they're connected, um, if you're not used to it, you're going to, your tongue kind of gets tied up at the end but if you do it over and over again you get used to it and it'll just be more natural all right well that's it for today then till next time bye bye